Hello and welcome to this second section of our course on Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. I mentioned before that this course is being run on a PC, which it is. I'm going to show you quickly now how to start Dreamweaver CS6 on a PC and your options for making starting Dreamweaver easier for yourself later on. Equivalent options exist for the Mac, of course. If I want to start Dreamweaver, I click on my Start menu within Windows 7. I then find Dreamweaver CS6. If it's not available on the Start menu already, click on All Programs. Up comes my list of programs. One of them there is Adobe Dreamweaver CS6. I can just click that to start, but to make things a little bit easier for myself in future, I can right click on that and choose the option Pin to Start Menu. If I click on Pin to Start Menu, what now happens when I click on the Start button is that Dreamweaver CS6 is on my Start menu. It makes it much easier to find it. And if I'm going to use Dreamweaver CS6 a lot, I'll normally pin it to the Start menu and then I can always find it without having to browse through all programs. I'm sure you're familiar with this, but with Windows 7 you can click on that and drag it up to, say, the top of the Start menu if you want to, drop it at the top, and that's where we're going to leave it for the duration of this course. I also have an option in Windows 7, if I right-click again, of unpinning it from the Start menu, and I can, in fact, put a shortcut on the taskbar at the bottom. So if I click on Pin to Taskbar, I've now see it down there. Again, another easy way of starting Dreamweaver. So I don't need quite that many ways of starting Dreamweaver. If I right click on the taskbar one there, unpin this program from taskbar, will remove the way of starting it from the taskbar. It's still there to show that Dreamweaver is actually running. But when I close Dreamweaver, that icon there will disappear. You can, of course, also put a shortcut onto your Windows desktop if you prefer to start programs in that way. Now, I'm very much concentrating now on people who are new to Dreamweaver, so I'm going to take it pretty easy on the first section or two, because Dreamweaver is a pretty complicated product nowadays. There are a lot of things to learn about it, and if you're new to it, it can all seem a little bit baffling, because there seems to be so much going on. So there are a few things on this first screen that I'm just going to move away from now, and we're going to come back and look at them a little bit later on. Now, first of all, if you look over on the right, we have a number of what are called panels. And these panels, like this one that's got Business Catalyst written on it, we're going to look at in a lot of detail later on. They will actually move if you want them to. You can actually take them and move them around the screen and put them into a convenient position for you to work with. Some of these panels, and there are many, many of these panels, some of them you're going to use a lot, and you're going to become very familiar with them, and you're going to adapt them to your own requirements. But for the moment, we're mostly going to close them. It's quite easy to close a panel. There's a little close button on the top right. Click that, click that, click that, and we're going to close several others as we go along, and we'll come back to panels in a lot more detail later on. And there are a couple of other things we can do here to make life a little bit easier to get started. If you look at the top right here, there's a little double arrow there. It's a collapse icon. And you can collapse whatever the icon is on, in this case this sort of stack of panels here. If I click on that, it makes it all smaller. It gives me a lot more working space. And when you're working, particularly on a complex website, working space, or what some people will call real estate, is all important. So watch out for that as a way of making yourself more space as well. Now let's look at one or two of the things on the screen that we're not going to hide. And perhaps one of the most important ones is the very top here, the top left which is called the application bar. Now this gives you the options for working with and switching between documents and applications. So for instance, if I click the drop down here, I have an option 
of how I can lay out my working page. Now that's going to mean a lot more when we actually start working on a page. We'll come back to that in a little while. The second one covers extensions to Dreamweaver where you can actually add components, widgets, extensions to Dreamweaver. Again, we'll talk about that later on. And the third one, the site, gives us access to our Dreamweaver managed websites. Now at the moment we haven't created a website but we're going to create one or two as we go along and this will be one way of switching between working on sites you've already created or as the top one there implies creating a new website. So we've looked at the applications bar which is going to be pretty useful and immediately below that you'll see something that any Windows application user will be familiar with and that's a menu bar. Now the menu bar of course again is one we're going to be using a lot. Some of the options such as help will be pretty obvious to you what that is although we'll look at it in quite a bit of detail later on. But there's one of these which is particularly important when you're getting started and that's window. Because if you click on the window menu look at what the options are you can see that you have a whole long list of things that you can display many of which are panels like the panels I mentioned a little while ago but one of them is the application bar itself so I could actually switch the application bar off even though I'm going to choose to keep it there it's checked which means it's shown so if I uncheck it watch what happens it's now gone the other thing to be aware of is that if I were to reshow that, Dreamweaver 6 is pretty intelligent about reshowing things and it will usually look at the best option. Let's just do see what happens if I click on window and click back on application bar. Let's see what happens. It finds that there is space to put the application bar in a little gap there and so it's going to use that little gap there. Again it's going to turn out to be very important to be able to use as much of the real estate of the screen as possible given that the application bar is very useful it's not really taking up any more space just snuggled in there between the menu system and these other controls that we're going to talk about a little bit later on so the next control along the top here is called the workspace menu and this is the way that we switch between what are called workspaces. Now, if you're new to Dreamweaver, workspaces won't mean much to you so far. They will a little bit later on. If I click on the drop down, I can see that there are a number of options here. And in fact, the way this works is that which one you choose depends on the particular function that you're performing at the moment. So if I'm designing a page or designing a whole site for that matter I'll probably have the designer option selected. But there are various other options such as coder where I'm actually writing code for a website, app developer, application developer, fluid layout, we're going to talk about fluid layout later on and so on. So we have a number of options and right at the bottom we have some very important options one of them is reset designer and basically whichever workspace we have selected we can reset it to a default layout by clicking there so with designer displayed I'd click and it would say reset designer. I can click on new workspace to create a new workspace and then I can manage my workspaces. Now I'm going to talk about that in more detail later on but basically what it means is if you have a particular way of setting out all the tools in Dreamweaver for a particular function that you perform and you like everything, you like your panels in a certain place, certain things displayed, certain things not displayed, everything set to a certain size, you can create that as a workspace and save it as a named workspace and you can pop that workspace up and use it at a time suitable to you. Now we're going to talk about workspaces later on, for the moment we're going to stick with designer. So you can probably tell that this is a search box and we're going to talk about that search box later on. You can also probably tell what the buttons in the top right are for because you have the standard windows minimize, maximize and then the close button which will close Dreamweaver 6. So I'm not going to dwell on those, 
if you know Windows you'll know how to use all of those on the right we've got what's usually referred to as the docking channel we've already closed some of the panels that were there before and at the bottom we have a panel that is still open and this is a very important one it's called the property inspector and the property inspector you'll probably use as much as any panel in Dreamweaver it displays information about the properties and attributes of the tools you're using graphic elements items or elements or sections on a page and so on so very often this is the main source of information about whatever you're working on it's currently empty because we're not working on anything we haven't got anything selected but we are going to be using the properties inspector and looking at it in great detail later on so right in the middle we have the welcome screen and as I mentioned before you can suppress that if you want to I'm going to leave it on for now which means that each time we start Dreamweaver it will appear to give us a bit of help to get started and we're actually going to use it now to create our first HTML page now if you're not familiar with HTML don't worry because I'm going to explain about that during the course but basically we go to the top of the create new options here click on HTML which is one of the many options and what we're asked to do is to work on a page now the page at the moment is completely empty and I'm going to put some text on it to just show you what happens when you put some text on a page and you already see that the properties inspector sometimes called the property inspector the, we'll call it the properties panel now has some information on it and this information note that the HTML option is selected here this information tells us about whatever content we're going to put on this HTML page this web page now and in fact this empty HTML page is the starting point for the next section so I'll see you then